Tyler Rhodes is an emergency responder. So when you take somebody's highway and they wake up with a room full of people standing around looking like me, they don't like that. You just took away a high and now they think they're in trouble. And so it's not unusual to have very combatant patients that they're ready to fight like right now. They go from not breathing to ready to fight right now. He's on the front line of the opioid crisis in North Carolina. We compartmentalize, you know, whatever you might be thinking about or, or feeling um, to accomplish the task. This is a task driven industry. You see something, you do something. But the task at hand for him is fighting the opioid crisis, and it carries a steep toll. You can't just carry those compartments forever. Overdoses from opioids are at a record high since the pandemic. In December 2020, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported overdose death rates were the highest ever recorded for a single 12-month period. Between May 2019 and May 2020, around 81,000 people in the United States died due to an overdose. Rhodes has experienced that increase as a responder. He says his frustration oddly isn't with the people, but rather what the drug turns them into. They'll be passed out at the car at a traffic light and the needle's still hanging out of their arm and they're not breathing. So then you hit them with some Narcan, you know, they wake up and they don't know why you're there. And then they tell you they didn't do anything. And you're like, okay, well, you know, here's the syringe, here's the spoon you cooked it in. And there's all these people that said, you know, you were blue in the face and not breathing. So, I mean, it's not them lying. Those same substances, says Rhodes, offer a release to some EMS workers struggling with personal or professional issues. The reality is that there's plenty of EMS workers who abuse narcotics and alcohol and other, you know, vices just, just as much as the public. We're not immune to the problems of society. Nobody is. The main weapon in the fight against opioid overdoses has been naloxone, also known as Narcan. Can you can you get this from like a, a pharmacy, or is this something no, that's only, prescription only? It's only prescription. Yeah. North Carolina's Department of Health and Human Services has started a harm reduction initiative, which includes resources on how to obtain and use naloxone. Besides these strategies, Rose has learned another valuable tool in helping people deal with addiction. You are encouraged to listen, and. At the same time, you don't tell people just what they want to hear. So if they ask you something, you, you have the right and you should tell them the truth. Rhodes has heard many confessions in the bed of his EMS truck during his 17 years as a first responder. People have problems and their family can escalate the problem. And so they don't want to open up and talk to them, but they don't know you. So if they don't know you, you're probably not to judge them. How is that like as an EMS worker to go to someone, help them, and then have to re-go back and help them again for something that they're doing to themselves? You know, maybe there's an opportunity, you know, the third time this week to get through them. You're on a bad path, you know. It's going to take just one more occasion before, you know, whoever calls doesn't get there for 20 minutes and there's nothing we can do. Even with those tools, EMS will always be there to help. Mm -hmm. It's not always reversible. There's, there's some actions that you can do that we can't fix. You know, you just gotta be aware of that. Due to the growing opioid crisis, his work as an EMS responder has changed over the years. The state has started several initiatives to educate first responders about how to handle opioid overdoses. Before a lot of education in intervention, I assumed it was a person's choice. That why do you choose to do this when in reality um, drugs and alcohol and other things, it, it does change their, it changes physically their brain and it does change how they process information. The fight against opioid addiction and overdoses is difficult, but Rhodes remains hopeful as he continues to fight the crisis from the front lines. You know, most people are still positive. They're embarrassed a lot of times with, you know, some interactions with us. But then there's other times where they, they want to open up and talk. And so, like I told you earlier, it's about listening. More than talking, it's listening.